Hi everybody, I'm putting this right at the beginning of the video. We have such an amazing and smart dive community that I get corrected. I love being corrected. Made an error in the video. You're going to hear me say that gradient factor has to do with the slowest tissue. It has nothing to do with the slowest tissue. I was corrected. It has to do with the leading tissue. Gradient factor has nothing to do with the slowest tissues. They are very likely not yet involved. It means the supersaturation of the leading tissue during your ascent. And you stop when the leading tissue reaches whatever that low gradient factor percent of the M value is. Okay, so wanted to put in that correction. Now watch the rest of the video. Hi, everybody. It's Woody, I am back on video number four. I am basing this video series on Andy Davis's article. It's amazing. It's in the original video description link, video one link. It's called Shearwater Dive Computer Settings Become a Power User. I absolutely love this article. Here we go, video four is all about what I find to be more complicated, the low gradient factor. Okay, gradient factor low. Here we go. Don't mess this up, Woody. I think I got it. Now listen. The low gradient factor is for mandatory decompression stops. So if you are a now decompression diver, a recreational diver, you should not be subject to the low gradient factor because you're never going to have to make decompression stops other than your safety stop unless you have an emergency decompression stop. Then that low gradient factor setting will come into place. Okay, so let's talk about it. This is going to determine the depth where your first decompression stop occurs during your ascent. A lower number is a deeper stop. So let me explain it and then I'm going to show you a chart. Now, at the end of this video of me, I'm going to let somebody else explain this that will do 1000% better than me and that's Simon Mitchell. I have a snippet from a video that he did, which I love, it's on YouTube called Decompression Controversies. And I carved out this one part where he touched on this low gradient factor. It's amazing to listen to it after you listen to me botch this. Okay, so I told you that this low gradient factor determines the depth where the first deco stop occurs during the set. So for instance, let's say I have my low gradient factor set to 30%. Okay, so a 30% starts the series of deco stops deeper, for example, than a higher number like a 50%. And that means it's just this simple. It means that during the ascent, the low number is not going to let my slowest tissue, if I have it set to 30%, get more than 30% saturated. If it does, bumps into 30%, it's going to stop me, and I have to wait at that depth, whatever that may be, and off gas, and it won't let me go up further until it's at 30% or less. So if it's 50%, that's more aggressive. It means it'll let that slowest tissue get 50% saturated. So that's obviously a faster ascent without having to stop. There's so much controversy over this. Some people call it deep stops, and I'm not here to argue what's better. I'm only here to tell you that this is what it does. And really, I said that rec recreational divers, it really has very little relevance to them because if there's no deco stops, then the depth of that first stop is irrelevant. It only becomes a factor for a recreational diver if you go into decompression, which you should not be doing. Now, let me show you a chart. Sometimes it's easier to see this visually. I love this chart. Got it from Simon Mitchell, his article. Okay, 
I'm going to try my best to explain this chart. This is in his video, okay? So let me explain this. Over here, we have depth, this bottom part, depth. It says increased pressure and depth, okay? This is also down here, we have our high gradient factor settings, and here we have our low gradient factor settings. This is our M value. This is the maximum tissue saturation that we could handle. This is a 100% gradient factor. So it's a little awkward because although the line is pointing down, as you move in this direction, you're moving from increased pressure, so you're deeper, and you're moving towards the surface. Okay, as we go in this direction. From here, we're ascending, we're ascending, we're ascending, we're ascending, lower pressure, lower pressure. So you're, you connect the line between the low gradient factor and the high gradient factor, which is what's going to let you out of the water. And here's the M value. So for example, this happens to be set to a, a 3080. I'm not recommending that. I'm just telling you this is what it's set to. So bottom line is, as you're ascending... If you ascend to any point where your slowest tissue becomes 30% saturated as you ascend, you would bump into this new line that we drew, and you would have to stop until you get to 30% or less. And as you're moving towards the surface, it's moving more towards your high setting. So the low setting applies at the deepest point in the dive, and as you're ascending, you're moving more and more and more and more towards your high gradient factor setting. So your percentage of saturation gets higher and higher, closer to the M line as you ascend based upon that high gradient factor number that you put in your computer. Okay, so this is causing deep stops. It's preventing, the low number is preventing you from, from going up past your low gradient factor setting until you get to the point where you're all the way almost at the surface and then your high number is going to is going to be your very last stop basically preventing you from getting to the surface okay so it's deco stops that's what it is it's deco stops now let's talk about some general rule of thumbs people like that to make this stuff easier and then at the end Simon Mitchell is going to explain this so much better than I just did, which is great. So, rules of thumb, which are scary, because they don't necessarily apply to everybody. All of this stuff is theoretical. All of this stuff was tested on, like, the perfect Navy SEAL and the perfect warm conditions and... Did he have a hard work of breathing or she have a hard work of breathing or not have a hard work of breathing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, as a general rule of thumb, recreational divers should use a higher gradient factor low setting for emergency decompression. It's what Andy is saying here. You'll want your emergency deco stop to be shallow. This is for recreational divers. Why? Because shallower emergency deco stops according to him, are preferable because it maximizes the speed your body releases nitrogen. You have less pressure. It extends the duration of your gas supply as well. You're not in the point where you have, um, where you're not very deep when you're doing these stops. So you have the ability for your gas to last longer for open circuit. Okay. So he goes on to talk about in here that um, in recreational mode, he has a discussion that gradient fact uh, that, for example, you can choose between three predefined conservative settings in the Shearwater Dive computer. Low, so it only provides 5% conservatism, which is not very conservative, is like a 4595. A medium conservatism would be a gradient factor low of 40 and a gradient factor high of 85. That's the default setting that Shearwater comes with for recreational diving, and that's 15% conservatism. And then finally, the high is a gradient factor low of 35 and a gradient factor high of 75. 
That's again for recreational diving. And he's saying that that provides a generous 25% conservatism. And he goes on to say for most divers, that's going to, that's going to suffice. And you can add further conservatism. I dive a 40, 70, 40 low. So I don't want to be as low as 30. I've moved up to 40% on my low gradient factor. It means I'll let a little bit more supersaturation of the slowest tissue on the ascent, on the deepest part of my dive. But I don't want to get out of the water with more than 70%, 70% to the maximum saturation level. That's 30% of a buffer, if you will. Okay, let's talk about some settings. He goes on to talk about those settings. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. You can access the custom gradient factors, differ depending on the model of shear water you use, the Perdix and Petrol. Enable an open circuit tech mode. You can then quickly adjust gradient factors in the dive setup menu. The Shearwater Peregrine in the system setup menu, you go to mode, setup, and select custom conservatism. Then once you do that, you can change these gradient factors accordingly. So that is a discussion of the low gradient factor. The summary, that's controlling your deco stops in the deepest part of your dive. As you move towards the surface, that top, that ceiling moves up because you're moving towards your high gradient factor, allowing you to get more and more and more saturation of your tissues as you move up towards the surface, ultimately stopping you on your final stop so that you're not saturated more than your high gradient factor setting before you get to the surface. Okay, a nice snippet at the end of the video from Simon Mitchell. I hope this helped you understand the low gradient factor. Man, we got some good stuff coming. Now we're going to get into some super cool stuff that the Shearwater computer has, and I think you will find it to be even more interesting when we start talking about gradient factor 99, surface gradient, gradient factor, and more. See you on the next one. Divers, divers who liked the simplicity of the mathematics of gas content models, the Bullman style approach, actually started to manipulate them to look like bubble models using a technique called gradient factors. Now don't get too bogged down in this, but I'll explain what I mean. So you've got a Bullman algorithm on your computer. What you could do, instead of buying a bubble model, you could just make it look like a bubble model. And so they use these things called gradient factors. So for example, you, would, you might use gradient factors 2090. Now that won't mean anything to you. I'll explain what I mean. What that meant was, that when you started your ascent, instead of ascending all the way to the Bullman limit, you would ascend till you got to 20% of the Bullman limit for that depth, and that would define your first decompression stop. And then for surfacing, you would surface at 90% of the Bullman, oh, that would be your first stop there. And then you would surface at 90% of the Bullman limit, and the model would interpolate a line between those and that would become your new supersaturation limit. And I'm sure you'll agree that what's unfolding there looks a lot more like that bubble model decompression that I showed you than a gas content model decompression. And that's, that was the intention, to make it look like a bubble model. And that's where we got to. In the mid-2000s, virtually the entire technical diving community was either using a bubble model or doing this to their Bullman model to make it look like a bubble model.